On Wednesday, January 5th, the Charles River Regional Chamber held a virtual event called Looking Back and Forward with Congressman Jake Auchincloss. Chamber President Greg Reedman spoke with the congressman about past and future legislation and, and how it will affect the local area. The president said it's time to pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which I agreed with and have, have always agreed with. We've got to pass that bill. This is $9 billion for Massachusetts, a billion for clean water, two and a half billion to upgrade our, our transit, four billion for fixing roads and bridges. This is a historic generational investment in the competitiveness of our economy. And it demonstrates on the world stage that democracies can still get big things done. And I'm thrilled that the bipartisan infrastructure bill passed. And there are, are important parts of the Build Back Better Act now that we need to make sure pass in 2022 as well. Probably most impactfully, the child tax allowance and the universal three and four year old pre-kindergarten. What's in the infrastructure bill that specifically helps our Charles River Chamber communities? In general, I think the improvements to transportation. Transportation is linked so deeply to housing and to business development. And the investments that we're making with, with the bipartisan infrastructure bill in not just roads and bridges, but in public transit and in giving cities and towns and nonprofit groups the flexibility to apply for on-demand transit and micromobility and pedestrianizing areas, all of these things create what I call a, a general business environment that's improved. How long will it take before we start to see the benefits of that bill? Money starts flowing this year. And build back better. You mentioned the child credit. What else is in there that's really important to you? Three big things. One, <clears throat> it lowers health care costs. So it empowers Medicare to negotiate drug prices. It makes hearing aids more affordable for senior citizens. It expands Medicaid. Uh, it expands the Affordable Care Act to make insurance premiums lower for low-income Americans. So make health care cheaper. And that's a big chunk of the $7,500 in savings that an average family of four would have. Number two, uh, it is, creates social security for kids. Great legacy of the Roosevelt and Johnson administrations was this creation of a standard of living that we just wanted to guarantee for every American, particularly for older Americans through, through Medicare, social security, and Medicaid. Children actually were kind of left out of that promise though. And starting with the children's health insurance program of the early 2000s, we've included children in that promise. And the Build Back Better Act to me completes that promise, or at least makes a big stride forward. It does that with the tax allowance, which is fully refundable now, and which in the last year uh, of its existence looked like it reduced childhood poverty by about 35 to 40%. Uh, it does that by making childcare more affordable. And it does that by making three and four year old pre K universally accessible. So, number two is, is social security for kids and the concomitant reduction in costs for families for childcare. And then number three is climate action. Uh, this bill is by far the largest US investment in carbon neutrality in history. In fact, the largest investment by any government in, in carbon neutrality in history. Let me ask you about some of the local business relief programs. As, as you know, the restaurant relief program uh, was underfunded. Many more restaurants that would have qualified just couldn't get money because they ran out of it. Uh, we don't have uh, the programs that we, the, the fitness industry had hoped for uh, funding programs for them. Uh, hospitality businesses did the same thing. Uh, the PPP program, which made a huge difference for businesses, is gone. Uh, we're still in a huge uh, economic um, crisis right now in terms of our businesses. Is there any reason to hope that Congress will come back with some more money for any of these things? Well, there's significant money still at the state level. I mean, so the American Rescue Plan sent $5 billion to the Massachusetts state government, <clears throat> excuse me, only about half of which has been spoken for at this point. There's another half of it left to be spent. And uh, Congress wanted to, to defer to the states to use those funds as necessary for their own business environments and for their own support, both for unemployed as well as for businesses that were hurting. So plenty of money still there. The most important thing that we can do, though, for, for businesses, in my opinion, is, is keep the economy open. Uh, we, we need people continuing to consume in-person services, right, which have been such a huge casualty of the pandemic. And to that extent, uh, keeping schools open, keeping the economy open uh, needs to be a priority for the governor and, and really for all elected officials.